أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلناك إلا كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون صدق الله صدق الله العظيم from Surah Safa verse number 28 chapter 34 Surah is chapter and look for verse 28 and you'll find this verse I have just read to you the meaning of that is Allah says وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةَ لِلنَّاسِ said we have not sent you O Muhammad except for the whole of mankind as a giver of glad tidings and as a warner but the bulk of mankind they still do not know in the Holy Quran the last and final revelation of God he is told in chapter 4 verse 157 that they didn't kill him and they did not crucify him but it was made to appear to them so that is what they thought they had done the Jews and those who dispute therein are full of doubts they have no certain knowledge they're only following conjecture guesswork fiction for a surety they killed him not that how can a man a thousand miles away from the scene of the happenings of the alleged crucifixion and 600 years away in time tell us what happened in Jerusalem some 600 years before we say that this is from God the omnipotent omniscient the all-knowing he knows and he has revealed this knowledge to his messenger Muhammad but you know I don't know how to reason with these people I don't know you'll find very great difficulty with this type of sickness when the guy comes along to your house I tell you it's, it's useless please tell them when you meet the ignorant one you say peace salam then you say to you your religion and to me mine you go your way I go my way sick people you don't talk to sick people but they are all not sick Allah says testifies in the Quran among them the Jews and the Christians there are good people Allah says so but the majority of them are perverted transgressors. I'm quoting from Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 85. It says, Wala tajidanna akarabahum mawaddata lillazina amanu allazina qalu inna nasara. And nearest to them, among them in faith, in love, and nearest among them in love to the believers, to the Muslims, will thou find those who say we are Christians. Zalika bianna minhum kisisina, because amongst them are men devoted to learning. Among the Christians, says the Holy Quran, are men devoted to learning. Waruh and men who have renounced the world. And people who are not arrogant. Abdullah Yusuf Ali, the commentator of this translation which I was showing it to you, in his note number 789 on this verse comments. He says, the meaning is not that they call themselves Christians, but they are such sincere Christians that they appreciate Muslim virtues as did the Abyssinians to whom Muslim refugees went during the persecution in Mecca. They would say, it is true we are Christians, but we understand your point of view and we know you are good men. Abdullah Yusuf Ali concludes that these Christians, they are Muslims at heart. 
that these Christians, they are Muslims as heart, never mind whatever label they apply for themselves. Our biggest points of differences between the Christian and ourselves, things that grated the Muslim most was this expression that Jesus is the only begotten son. Begotten, not made. This is what begetting was greeting the Muslims. And it is greeting according to the recitation read by Waqari. He read those words, very strong words. He says, Waqalu takhazar rahmanu walada. And they say that Ar Rahman, the merciful God, he has begotten a son. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, He says, in answer to that, He says, لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا عِدَّةً It's one of the most abominable assertions one can make. تَقَادُ السَّمَوَاتُ يَتَفَتَّرْنَا مِنْهُ At it the skies are ready to burst. وَتَنْشَقَّ الْأَرْضُ And the earth to split asunder. وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ حَدَّةً And the mountains to fall down in utter ruin. Such a horrible swearing that you say that God begot a son because begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. How can you attribute such a quality to God? So what is the Bible? So what do we consider the Bible to be? As a whole, per se, we say this is not the book of God. And I proved it. According to all reasoning, according to the book itself, the internal evidence that Moses didn't write the books attributed to him, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't write the books attributed to them, not only is it not the book of God, but it's not even the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. You're talking about 24,000 manuscripts. I challenge you, says there's no two are identical. So you've got 24,000 different Gospels. Which one? You just pick, took a pick that suited you, you accepted it. Who authorized you? Council of Nisi. They said, we take this, we take that, we take that. All the Gospels that are now accepted were not accepted at one time. It's now pick and choose what suits you, you accept it. That's what you have done. And you say, now it's the Word of God. But now the word of God is in it, in the book. The word of God is in the book. The word of the prophet is in the book. The word of the historian is in the book. And pornography is in the book. Now I have to explain all that to you. I said, you see, I give you examples about the word of God. Like in the book of Deuteronomy. You see the verse I quoted in Arabic, the same thing is in the Bible. Almost an identical idea is there. It reads, I will raise them up a prophet. I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So who is this I? God. He's speaking to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. That I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren. From among the bani Ismail. The Bani Israel are being addressed is from among your brethren. Like unto thee, like you, like Musa. And he will, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So he says, this I is God. You don't have to be a theologian or a DD or an evangelist. Anybody will tell you on the plain reading of it that these are not the words of Moses. These are the words of God. Another quotation from the book of Isaiah, as if God is speaking, and God is speaking. He said, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Who's that? Isaiah? No. No Jew says that Isaiah claimed divinity. They would have killed him if he did. No, he's speaking on behalf of God. God is speaking through him like a mouthpiece. This is the job of a prophet of God. He is a mouthpiece of God. He hears the words of God and he conveys them to you. So, I, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is no savior besides me. Who? God. God is talking. This is the word of God. You don't have to be a professor of theology to see that. There is another type of evidence in the Bible. See, now, if it was a lecture, I would have been, done all this last night, but this is a debate. So whatever the man is throwing at you, you can't start grappling with everything. The caravan is moving and the dogs start barking. You don't start the caravan moving back to chase the dogs. You've got to move on. You've got to do your job and get, get on with it and finish your job. There was no occasion for explaining all these things to you. you see? Then there is the prophet, word of the prophet of God. 
Example, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Who is this? I, Jesus. Jesus is talking, the word of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, that whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. But I say unto you, who is this? I, Jesus. Words of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, who is this? I, Jesus. The words of a prophet of God. Then there is another type of evidence in the Bible. First was, as if God speaking. Second was, as if a prophet was speaking. Third, what does the historian how does he speak? He says, in the Gospel of St. Mark, say, while he, talking about Jesus, in bracket I put Jesus, while he was going forth into the way, he, Jesus, saw a fig tree in the distance with leaves. Happily, he came up to it, wanting to find figs thereon. But when he, Jesus, came, there was nothing but leaves, for the season was not yet. Who's writing? An eyewitness or a your witness, not God and not Jesus. So you see, another type of evidence. Word of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian. And there was that other type of thing I was suggesting, and I lost $100. You remember if you were there? I lost $100. I wanted Brother Swaggart, you know, to read a certain chapter from the book, from the Bible. And he ignored it at first. Maybe he had no time. And somebody from the audience prodded him again. He says, you know, look, what about that chapter as a kill? And there was $100 also involved, so he read it. But he read it at 60, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so one of your university students, while I'm sitting there, he comes to me. He said, look, he read, but uh, I didn't know. Uh, I said, what was the joke? I said, look, one thing is, you are at a disadvantage. You are an Arab from Arab country. You don't know English too well, number one. Number two, that the English that he was using were, was archaic, old-fashioned, from the King James Version. You see, we had given him that pamphlet, which was in, from the new international version, modern language, where you call a spade a spade. But he was reading from that archaic Bible. I can't blame him for that, because he uses that. King James, he read it. And you don't know English too well. That's also a disadvantage. And he was reading at that speed I told you just now. So these are all the facts. I said, look, what you do, you go and read it, you know, in that pamphlet and you see what he was reading. So he read it. You know, bulk of the people, I'm sure, they didn't catch the joke. You know, the speed, his pronunciation, he was not as emphatic when he quotes other biblical verses. You know, he makes every word and phrase to go down your throat or down your ears. But here was something different, 60 miles an hour. So, <laughs> there is that type of thing, which I said, no decent man can read it to his mother, sister, daughter, or even his fiancée, if she's a good woman. Now, what you have to do is you have to go and read it yourself to know what was read. You didn't catch the joke. It's no fault of mine. You see, you don't understand English too well, and then, you know, the speed, and the archaic language, all these things were factors where you don't catch the joke. But if you catch the joke, then, you know, something that no decent man can read in his church or to his family, right? So this is there's another type of evidence. So we have the word of God in the Bible. There is the word of the prophet in the Bible. There's the word of the historian, an eyewitness or your witness in the Bible. And there is that other type, which we say pornography in the Bible. We have the word of God in the Quran. Only Allah's kalam. He doesn't tell you stories. We know an incident in the life of the Prophet wasallam that a Christian deputation had come from Najran in Medina. These were Arab Christians. They had heard that another Arab, he is claiming that he's in communication with the Almighty. He's a prophet. So they said, let's go and cross-examine him. Let us go and see what he knows. So they came to Medina, and they were housed in the Masjid al Nabawi. They ate there, they slept there, and they had a dialogue there for three days and perhaps three nights. And when Sunday came, our Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam he offered the masjid to these Christians to offer their prayers. He was so broad-minded, not like us. 
See, some of us, we are, you know, we think our masjids are superior to the masjid the Nabawi that our Nabi had. No doubt, in construction, yes. He allowed them, but gave them permission to make their prayers. So during the course of this discussion, the spokesman for the Christian poses the question, among so many other things. Say, all right, now tell us, O Muhammad, what is your concept of God? And our Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he doesn't fumble. You know, well, you see, it's like this and like that. No, he doesn't do that. He is the God of Abraham, Moses, and David, and Solomon, you know, who spoke to Abraham. No, he doesn't talk like that. See, when the question is posed, what is your concept of God? So the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as if he was pressing his spiritual buttons, trying to contact Filawhim Mahfuz, the head computer. So, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard that. There were no buttons to press. I said, as if, I hope you people understand that. Then when I go away, don't create a controversy. He said, Muhammad pressed buttons. You know, he had a computer. I said, as if, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Comes the answer through him. Qul, say, who Allahu Ahad. He is Allah, the one and only. Allah Samad, God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakun lahu kufan ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. And you see, this is our concept of God. Now you see, it's on a different level. He is made to say, Qul, say. He's asking, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard him say that. But comes the answer, say. It doesn't fit into normal speech. They are asking, what is your concept of God? So you don't tell him, say. Somebody asks you, what is 12 times 12? What do you say? 144. Am I right? 6 times 6? 36. You don't say, say 36. Say 144. Do you say like that? No. Why say? Because the words are being put through his mouth. From fi lawham mahfuz. From the preserved tablet. From the head computer. See? He's in contact. He's got that machine. Spiritual buttons. Diabari ta'ala is communicating. What shall I say? He says, say, who Allah wa'ad. Now, that I say. Look, all these things that I told you is not in the Quran. In the Quran you open, Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, you start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Qul hu Allahu ahad. Say is Allah the one and only. Allahu samad. God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakullahu kufu wa ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. That's all. Where he was. What was the occasion? What, how did it come about? Nothing. So only the word of God. Everything else, where the details given to us later on. They said, look, this is what happened. People who are eyewitnesses, your witnesses, what's happening. What our Nabi said, what happened. All that put together is our knowledge. You find the other de details in the books of Hadith. Words of the Prophet, separate volume. Allah's Kalam, separate volume. Hadith, words of the Prophet, separate volume. History, Imam Ghazali, Ibn Rush, Ibn Taymiyyah. Great writers, great writers, separate books, separate books. And our Arabian Nights, also separate books. <laughs> yes? You know the Arabian Nights? You know, fairy tales, those filthy, dirty stories were circulating around the campfire. You know, the Arabs also had something to pass time with. You know, pre-Islam, before Islam, and even maybe after Islam. You know, under Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, we don't know how the empire developed. And they were wanting to pass time, you know, somehow, light-heartedness, <laughs> ah, jokes, filthy, dirty stories. You stole around the campfire, right? They're written now in books. Fitzgerald, he translated it, the Arabian Nights, the unexpurgated edition. I read it and I enjoyed it very much. Was a young boy, oh, I loved it, you know. <laughs> the unexpurgated editions. But it's separate. It's not in the Quran. It's not in the works of the sayings of the prophet. It's not in the works of a historian. Separate book. So we have the words of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian, and pornography all in separate compartments. They have it all in one volume. Is qalatil malaikatu ya Maryamu. So behold, the angel said, O Mary, inna allaha yubashiruki bi kalimatim minhu that Allah gives you glad tidings, good news, of a word from him. Ismuhul Masih, his name will be the Messiah. 
translated Christ. Ismu hul masi, Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, wajihan fi dunya wal akhirah, held in honor in this world and in the hereafter, wa min al muqarrabin, and of the company of those nearest to God. Wa yu'limu nasa, and he will speak to the people. Fil mahdi wa kahlan, in childhood and in maturity. Wa min al salihin, and he shall be of the company of the righteous. She retired to a remote place in the east, says the Quran, and after the birth of the child, she returns. Shamelessly, of course, carrying the little child infant in her arms. So at length, she brought the babe to her people, carrying him in her arms. They said, Ya Maryam, O oh Mary, laqad ji'ti shay'an fariya. So truly an amazing thing has thou brought. They are shocked, knowing full well that she was not married. Where did you bring this child from? The insinuating, illegitimate child. Where did you get this child from? Shamelessly parading in the village. Ya ukhta Haruna, so O oh sister of Harun, coming such a noble ancestry of the children of Aaron, the brother of Moses, the Levites, the priestly class among the Jews. You come from such a priestly and noble family. Ya ukhta Haruna, ma kana abu kimra asawim, wa ma kanat ummu ki baghiya. He said, your father was not a man of evil, nor thy mother a woman unchaste. Insinuating, where did you bring this illegitimate child from? What is she to do? Would they listen to her explanation? Would you listen to your daughter's explanation? If she tells you, she says, Daddy, you know, I heard some voices, and now this child is born, you'll believe her. Would you? They were in no mood to listen to such stories. What was she to do? She merely pointed to the babe. Fa'asharat ilay, says the Quran. She merely pointed to the child and says, ask him. She knew that this was no ordinary child. Ask him. So they say, qalu kayfa nukallimu man kana fil mahdi sabiya. They say, how can we talk to one who's a child in the cradle, a baby, an infant? How can we talk to him? And by a miracle, he spoke from his mother's arms and defended his mother against an unbelieving audience. He says, Inni Abdullah. So most certainly I am the servant of Allah. Kitab. He has given me revelation. Waja'alani Nabiya and he has made me a prophet. Waja'alani Mubarakan Ainama Kuntu. Wausani Bisolati was Zakati Madun to Haya. Wabaran Bivalidati. Walam Yajani Jabbar and Shaqiya. He said, I am indeed a servant of God. He had given me revelation and made me a prophet. And he had made me blessed wheresoever I be. So, and he had made, enjoined on me prayer and charity as long as I live. And he has made me kind to my mother and not overbearing or miserable. He has made me kind to my mother and not overbearing or miserable. This is the first miracle that Jesus Christ performed according to this holy book of Islam. He defended his mother against an unbelieving audience as an infant from his mother's arms. When this good news was given to Mary about the birth of a holy son, she says, Rabbi anna yakunu li waladun walam yamsasni bashar. She says, oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? So the angel says in reply, Qala kazalikillahu yakhluku ma yasha. See, even so, Allah creates what he wills. Wa idha qada amran, whenever he decrees a matter, fa inna ma yakulu lahu kun fa yakun. See, whenever he decrees a matter, he merely says to it, be and it is. This is the Muslim concept of the birth of Jesus. For God to create a Jesus without a human father, he merely wills it and the thing comes into being. If he wants to create a million Jesuses without father, without mother, he merely has to will them into being. This is what we believe about the omnipotence of God in Islam. But what does this miraculous birth prove? Does that make him into a God?
or a begotten son of God? We say no. The Quran says, Inna masala Isa in the Allahi kamasali Adama. He says the similitude of Jesus in the sight of God is like that of Adam. Khalaqahum in Turabin, he created him from dust. And he said, be, and he was. We Muslims as a whole, we believe that Jesus Christ was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth. We believe that he was the Messiah. And we believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission. And he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. This is really the only point of real difference between the Muslim and the Christian is the divinity of Christ. And for that, I say that our brother has not adduced a single statement from the lips of Jesus saying, I am God or worship me. While he walked this earth, he never made such a statement. God Almighty says, in the Quran now, another test is given. So, Most certainly Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, is no more than an apostle. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. And his mother was a virtuous woman, a saintly woman. And they both had food. So, what's exceptional about that? We all eat food, don't we? No. This is in reference to the idea that they are gods or supernatural. The Roman Catholics call Mary the mother of God. Mary is the mother of God. Jesus is the son of God. And as God, as our brother Shorosh, as well as many Christians believe that he is God in human form. He is God incarnate. So, if they are such godly people, then they both add food. So if they add food, that means they had a call of nature. If you eat, you must look for the toilet sooner or later. Or look for the bush or the rocks. It can't be helped. God Almighty doesn't tell you in those words. But listen to what he says. Unzur. Kaifa nubayjino lahumulayati. He says, see how we make our signs clear to you. That they both had food. The implications of eating food. Unzur. See. How we make our signs clear to you. Summanzur, have another look. Look, have another look. How they have deviated from the path, gone away from the true path, attributing to God an animal nature that He is like a man. We are made in His image. What image? This image? This is the monkey image. We are all glorified monkeys. Some look like chimpanzees, some like baboons, some like something else, you know, gorillas, all of us. We are all glorified monkeys. Is that the image God is talking about? <laughs> and the Christian says yes. Christian says yes. Now, as far as the Muslim is concerned, believing that any human being, any human being is God or is equating with God, it is an act of treason against God. Whether it's a Hindu idea of a God incarnate, or whether it is a Christian idea of a God incarnate, God becoming a man. The Holy Quran says, Lakat kafar al-lazina qalu inna Allah hu al Masih ibn Maryam. Said, whosoever says that Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, is God, they are making kufr. It's an act of blasphemy. It's a treason against God. Wa qal al Masih, but Christ said, Ya bani Israel, O children of Israel, La'budullah, worship Allah. Rabbi wa Rabbukum, who is my Lord and your Lord. Innahu man yushrik billah, whoever will associate anyone with Allah, faqad haram Allah will jannah, Allah will make jannah haram for them. Heaven will be forbidden for them. Wa ma'wa nar, and the fire of hell will be the dwelling place. Wa ma'ali zalim in amil ansar, and for the wrongdoers there will be no one to help. And in the Holy Quran we are told, Qul, tell them, Ya ahl al-kitab, O people of the book, O Jews and Christians, la taqlu fi dinikum. Do not go to extremes in your religion. Don't go to extremes. They are going to extremes. Jesus Christ was born miraculously. So one group of people, the Jews, they insinuate that he is the illegitimate son of Mary because he's got no father. One extreme. 
The Christian says, because he's got no earthly father, his father is God. Another extreme. So Allah tells us to tell them. Ya ahl al-kitab, la taghlu fi dinikum, wa la taqulu ala Allah illa al-haq. And don't say anything about Allah except the truth. Inna mal masih, most certainly the Messiah, Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, Rasulullah, is the messenger of Allah. Wa kalimatuhu, and a word proceeding from him. Al-qaha ila Maryam wa ruhum minhum, which he bestowed upon Mary, and a spirit proceeding from him. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ So believe in Allah and His Messenger, Jesus Christ. Our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he comes, he is told in the verse that we started with, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ We have not sent you, don't make a mistake. This was towards the end of his earthly sojourn. Arabia was at his feet. He could afford now to sit back and relax. After 60 years of trials and tribulation, he can now sit back and relax. It was only a question of polishing up the ummah. That's all. Job was done. Not for him. Allah sends his messenger, Jibreel. Tells him, وَمَا أَرْسَنْلَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ He said, we have not sent you, but as a mercy unto the whole of mankind. بَشِيرًا As a giver of glad tidings. وَنَزِيرًا And as a warner. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْسَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَلَمُونَ But the majority of mankind, the bulk of mankind still don't know. There is no time for leisure. There's work to be done. The banner of Tawheed is to be lifted up. There's no time for leisure. What does he do? What did he do? Immediately he called the scribes. Those who could write. He says, bring out your parchments and write. What? Letters to the emperor of Persia. To the emperor of Persia. To the emperor at Constantinople. Heraclius at Constantinople to the king of Egypt, the king of Yemen and the Nagas of Abyssinia. Five letters. He had them dictated. And five horsemen, ashabas. A horse, an ashaba, a companion, and a scroll. Thousand miles this way, one thousand five hundred miles this way, a thousand miles across the Red Sea, and on and on. Five people. He sent them out in his lifetime. This is the example he set for us. This is the example he set for us. If he had our petrol dollars, and if he had the printing machines that we have at our disposal, wouldn't he have flooded the world with the Quran? I ask you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. From Muhammad Rasulullah to Heraclius, the Emperor at Constantinople. I invite you to the religion of God. Accept it, accept it and be benefited. Then another verse from the Quran. Qul ya ahl al-kitab. Say, O people of the book, O Jews and Christians, ta'ala, come. That we come to common terms as between us and you. That we worship none but Allah. And that we associate no partners with Him. And that we do not take from among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. But if they turn back, tell them that we at least are Muslims. We have submitted our will to the will of God. There is a system of training. You can train dogs to hate all black people. You don't know. So the Christian world was trained to hate the man Muhammad and his religion. Allah says, we have not sent you, but as a mercy unto the whole of mankind, the whole universal man. Alameen of the world. Alam means the world, and Alamin means the worlds, not only physical world, spiritual world, every type of creation. That's his purpose in life, as a mercy unto the whole of mankind. Not for Jews, or not for Hindus, or Arya Samaj, he is for the whole of mankind. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. This is how he starts. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord and cherisher of the worlds, not of the Arabs or the Pakistanis, or the Malaysians. No, no, no. Alameen. Greatness of purpose. Smallness of means. You know how he starts? Before he's born, his father dies. By the time he's six, his mother dies. His grandfather starts looking after the, the little infant child, and before long, grandfather dies. Then by the time he's 12, his uncle Abu Talib's goats is looking after. This is the beginning. Smallness of means. No political party to back him up. 
no royalty to back him up. It's one man against all men. One man against the whole world. Nobody, his own people were not prepared to receive his message. From the word go, trials and tribulations, you know his history. Smallness of means and outstanding results. Today, 1,000 million Muslims. Christianity boasts 1,200 million. But they had 600 years they were ahead of us. But an American, in his book, The Messenger, Bodley, Bodley, in his book, The Messenger, he says that there are more professing Christians in the world than professing Muslims. Professing means people who s fill census forms. So what religion you belong to? Even if he's an atheist, he will say Christian. He wants a Jew because he's not a Jew. He wants a Hindu because he's not a Hindu. He will say Christian. You know, coming from a Christian background, he says Christian. So from that point of view, there are more Christians in the world today. There are more professing, people who say with the lips, there are more professing Christians than professing Muslims. But there are more practicing Muslims in the world than practicing Christians, people who practice the religion. Alhamdulillah. There are more Muslims who practice. We have our shortcomings. But as a people as a whole, there are more practicing Muslims in the world today than practicing Christians. This is what Bodley says in his book, The Messenger. Of the sun rising in the west. I said, no, it's the sun of Islam. The knowledge of Islam, the knowledge of God will rise from the west. And this nation is hungry. They go for anything. Anything goes here. They worship Sun Myung Moon. They worship Guru Maharaj, Swami Parbhupada. They worship the, the Maharishi. They worship Father Divine. They used to worship his dead now. Father Divine. They are, you have the Satan worshipping cult here. Anything, everything. The nation is hungry, he's frustrated. He doesn't know what to do. They see all the filth around them. They don't know what to do. Anything that comes across, they grab. People who can worship anything, everything, why won't they will not accept Allah bari ta'ala? Why won't they? The reason is you don't open your mouth. You know why you don't open your mouth? You're too terrified. You're suffering from a host of inferiority complexes. Get them out of you. Open the Quran, read the Quran, and let Allah speak to you. Allah will do it for you. Allow his book to touch you, your heart. And inshallah, allow Allah to talk to you. And he's talking to you in the Quran. He's talking to you and me and to every passerby in the street. Let him talk to you. And you will not be able to sit on your backside doing nothing. Waiting for the other people to come and mess, make a mess of you. To use you as a punching bag. To use you as a doormat. To want to make mess in your head. Is that the role? Allah says no. Leave the hero Allah deen kulli. And enough is Allah is a witness to this fact that he's going to make his deen to prevail. It's a privilege Allah is giving you. Take it. What is the true position of a Muslim woman according to Islam? The position of the Muslim woman is in Islam that men have their rights and women have their rights. And the Quran says, Ar-Rijalu kawamun al nisa It says, man is a degree above women because he is the breadwinner. See, if there's extra responsibility put upon an individual, naturally he has extra powers. In other words, in no society, Western society that I know, that if a man deserts his wife, he is apprehended and is made to pay maintenance. But if the case is in reverse, they don't catch the woman and make her to pay maintenance for the family. So this is natural because the man is the breadwinner, he is made responsible, so he is a degree above women. There is no such thing as absolute equality, men and women. But women actually rule the home. You know, like the Frenchman says, that women can do anything because they govern those who govern everything. And it's a fact whether in a Western home or in an Oriental home, Muslim home. Is the woman, if she knows how, you know, Shakespeare says, she stoops to conquer. If she humbles herself, he says, dear, what do you say? And the husband will turn and say, look, man, whatever you say, you know, where you want to go, San Francisco or New York, whatever you say, he's prepared to give in. So in other words, now it's left to the woman what she, she wants to compete with man. We see the competition going on and it's creating all the problems. You do the same thing, your problems will be the same. So in Islam, the position is that they both have their rights. Men have their rights and women have their rights, but they are not absolutely equal. 
in the sight of God, they are all equal. But in social, for social purposes, there is like, for example, you know, divorce. There is, for example, man can have four wives and a woman can't have four husbands. You want equality? That the woman also can have four husbands? Well, you try it and see what happens. <laughs> Brother, I can't give you any easy solution. I can't give you a pill. I said, look, you take this pill and your problems will be over. You see, a lifetime of evil habit, it takes great effort, great sacrifice, you know, to control it, to curb it. And what you need is good company and the company of Allah's kalam. You read this book of God with understanding. If you read it with understanding, you will find that Allah Bari Ta'ala, God Almighty is talking to you. And when you allow him to talk to you and talk to you and talk to you, his words will do the job for you. There is no easy way. I can't say that there is some easy way that, as I said at the beginning, you take a pill or you take something, I give you a piece of paper with something written or you put it on your neck and you will be, you know, solving this problem. I have no such easy solution. It's a battle and which you'll have to carry out. To the best of your sincerity, energy, you carry it out and I believe and I believe that God Almighty will help you in your effort to go straight. I hope so. Yes. Wallah, and I tell you, it is the destiny of Islam to change this country. You have it. Allah has given it to us. He's telling us in the Quran, He's given you a deen. He said, Li yuza hira huwa la deena kulli. Is to master, overcome, and supersede every other deen, every other way of life, whether it be Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism, Communism, every ism. Islam is destined to master them all. He said, Wallahu karihal kafirun. No mind how much the unbeliever might not like it. And he repeats the same formula in the Quran again. And he ends by saying, Walau karihal mushrikun. Now man, the mushrik might not like it. This is the destiny of his deen. And he repeats the same formula again in the Quran three times. He says, Huwa allazi arsala rasulahu bil huda. He it is who has sent his messenger with guidance. Wa deen al haq and with the religion of truth. Li yuz hira huwa la deen kulli. That it may prevail, overcome, and supersede every other deen. Bulldoze them all. Wa kafa billahi shahida. And enough is Allah is a witness to this fact that he's going to make his deen to prevail with you or without you. Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. But before we expound this aspect, let me reread to you this verse with a little emphasis on the pronouns. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. How be it? When he... The spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. Eight masculine pronouns in one verse. I say, it ill befits a ghost. You agree? That is a man, a man, a man, a man. Eight times. There is not another verse in the whole Bible with eight masculine pronouns or eight feminine gender or eight neuter genders. There isn't. This is a unique verse for a unique personality, Muhammad. Man, man, man. Not a ghost, not a spook. Holy Quran. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, so you believe. In al khamru, most certainly intoxicants, wal maisiru, and gambling, wal ansabu, and fortune telling, wal aslamu, and idol worship, rizu min amali shaitan, are an abomination of Satan's handiwork, fachtani buhu la'allakum tuflihun. It's a shun such abomination that you may prosper.